Assalamu alaikum. Please come forward as much as possible and fill in the first rows first. Please come forward and fill in the first rows first. Thank you. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar Allah Akbar, Allah
وقد خاب من دساها وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقوم قدموا من الجهاد مرحبا بكم قدمتم من الجهاد الأصغر إلى الجهاد الأكبر قيل يا رسول الله وما الجهاد الأكبر قال جهاد النفس رواه بيقي Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we started learning about the various kind of an-nafs, that is the most powerful, motivating, internal force. And we have gone through the five terms according to Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, if you don't know them, you won't be able to understand Islam. But it's not only limited to those five terms. We Muslims, unfortunately and regretfully, have reached an status where Al-Musutalahatul Islamiyah, the most important Islamic terms are not understood by us. And we gave right and left fatwas of disbelief, kufr and shirk and bid'ah without reaching in-depth knowledge at least in the Islamic terms. In last khutbah, towards the conclusion, I mentioned the word At-Tasawwuf Al-Islami and I explained it that the term At-Tasawwuf Al-Islami was coined 200 years after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's death but the spread of true Islamic Tasawwuf is not different from what was done as a function of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a period of 23 years. And his functions are counted in the Holy Quran in several verses. And we gave the reference. The first one is chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 151. And precise word were you zakki him. That tazkiyatun nufus is nothing but a tasawwuf al islami Yes, there are people and countries in the Muslim world in general and in Middle East in particular. When they hear the word Sufism or a tasawwuf without any reluctance. Like when I was leaving last week, a brother, I respect him very much for his comment, without coming to me, he just passed by me and he said, Astaghfirullah, Sufism is better. What he said is right. But the way he said is not right. You know, you need, we need to learn the method. I hope he's here. And I'm going to explain that yes, one of the terms is bid'ah, repeatedly mentioned in the sunnah and hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we include in our Arabic sermon Namely, kullu bid'atin dalala. Every bid'ah and innovation and new thing is going astray, deviation from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kullu dalalatin finna. And every deviation is in the hellfire. But you need to understand something if it is started 
by one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam out of four al-khulafa'u'l-rashidun the rightly guided caliphs that is included into the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said lan tadillu abada you will never go astray if you follow my way and the way of al-khulafa'u rashidun rightly guided caliphs so there is a differentiation between bid'ah hasanah and bid'ah sayyi'ah i bring you the example from sahih al-bukhari in sahih al-bukhari mentioning about the salat al-taraweeh and there is no dispute among the scholars of Islam and among the ajilla is sahaba the most prominent companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the way we perform taraweeh 20 raka'ah in the holy month of Ramadan it is a bid'ah hasana. It wasn't done in the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the masjid for three days, three nights and he performed the taraweeh. But who started the present form? Where a Hafiz goes and recites the Holy Quran completely in the Taraweeh prayer. Who brought them together in a Jama'ah and none of the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even the most prominent ones who were alive at the time of Sayyidina Umar Farooq Radiallahu Anhu objected to it and it continues as we speak. Why? Because Sayyidina Umar Farooq Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped coming to the masjid back and forth, back and forth, back and forth getting the guidance from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he reached to the conclusion that if Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued it will be made obligatory. That was the reason why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not come and he knew the spirit why because in many occasions prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned that if there was a prophet after me it will be umar farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu it was umar farooq radiyallahu anhu who at least in three occasions completed the recitation of the Holy Quran when it was received by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam completing and concluding the verses of the Holy Quran. So, a bid'ah sayyah is deviation. But a bid'ah hasana, what is the description of bid'ah hasana? It has bases in the functions and actions which were performed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the Prophet who started the Salat al-Taraweeh. Therefore, when Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu brought everyone together in one jama'ah and brought the Hafiz to recite the Holy Quran, it was one of the greatest deed of righteousness which he has performed with which the Holy Quran was preserved in the hearts and minds of all the Huffaz. You will never find a Hafizul Quran 
the one who has rendered the Holy Quran to his memory that during the holy month of Ramadan if you lead the Tarawih prayer you never forget the holy Quran and how many times they recite the holy Quran that was the greatest basis for the preservation of the holy Quran and recitation of the holy Quran and for that there are of course ahkam and guidelines and exactly in the same way Tazkiyatun Nufus The internal purification When the name changes Action remain Remain same It does not matter There is a background For naming it At-Tasawwuf al-Islami Sufism That at the time of Harun Rashid And those Khulafa Who call themselves Caliphs and plenty, unlimited material wealth was enjoyed by them. They started living in luxuries. They started eating and drinking in utensils of the gold and silver. They started having harems. They started having dancing and all kind of day deviation. So a group of people to remind them they practice the essence of Tazkiyat al nufus To remind them that first four Khalifas were wearing patched clothing. Their life was the greatest example for any Caliph. You know the story of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When his wife made a dessert, he asked, Are we able to afford a dessert? <coughs> because he knew that from Baytul Mal, the state treasury, he is not taking what he is supposed to take. The salary of a middle class person, he was only taking barely the money which can only provide the food expenses. He said, how, how can we afford this? So the wife said, for a few weeks I was craving to have some sweet. But we could not afford. So I started saving a penny. And few pennies when they were there, I was able to make this dessert. So what few pennies she saved? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu next day, he went to the state treasury and reduced his already, you know, base minimum expenses which he was taking to cover the bed and the food. When we talk about Khulafa or Rashidun, those were the perfumed personalities. Look at Sayyidina Umar Farooq when he came to give the khutbah on a Friday. People said, sit down. We don't want to listen to you. First, you have to give us the answer. You're wearing a robe, this long shirt, which is worn in Arabia, fold. And it looks like the same fabric which was distributed among the Muslims. And the peace which was given to every single Muslim, it cannot be sufficient to make one long shirt. So what's the deal behind it? Let us know. Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Will you accept if I request my son to answer this question? They said, We are interested in the answer. Nobody has any problem with that. So the son of Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu stands up and he informs 
the crowd and again Omar Farooq radiallahu anhu deserved to have a middle class person salary from the state treasury and he did not take that. So the son said, my father has only one shirt. Every time he washes, he wraps himself into a sheet until the shirt dries. When these pieces of fabric distributed among all the Muslims, I gave as a gift my piece to my father. Put together those two pieces, he was able to make that shirt. So the crowd said, now go ahead and give us the khutbah, we will follow whatever you will teach us. So brothers and sisters in Islam, a bid'ah, don't just disqualify it and throw the, the remarks like this. First gain the knowledge about the terminologies which are used in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with the same token, we need to understand that what is the meaning of the word Sufism and why was it adopted by the group of the people after 200 years, a new name who rebelled from those life of the luxuries because the essence of the tazkiyat nufus which is the word connected to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is living with the minimum. According to Islam, you are not a wealthy person. According to the, you know, amount of money you have, the real Islamic spirit is you are wealthier according to your contribution to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much you give away, that makes you the person who is wealthy in the terminology of Islam. One of those Sufis was the one who inherited 70,000 dinars. In today's value of the money must be close to a million dollars. And the same day before Maghrib he distributed every single penny out of it to help the poor and the needy and to help the many projects of the communities. That was their way to follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when one companion showed the Prophet that he is tying his stomach with a stone because it has gone so inside because he hasn't eaten for many days the Prophet showed there were two stones connected to the stomach of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Spirit of giving and that cannot be inculcated unless we have the overflowing love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, overflowing love of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we have purified ourselves from the bad morals and beautified it with the beautiful ethical system which was left by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is the essence of the Sufism or Tazkiyat al-Nufus that is a takhliyah anil radha'il wa takhliyah bil fadail so where does this word come from? There are four meanings about it. The first one is, it comes from the Arabic word Safa Yasfu. Safa means the purity of heart. And Tazkiyat al-Nufus means you have to remove all the weeds from around your heart because it is the seat of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the weeds? Enmity, jealousy, ill feeling, all those greed.
grudges, all those you have to remove. Because with those, the love of Allah and love of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not valid. So from Safa, a Sufi is the one who first and primarily work on his own heart. As I read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a group of the people when they came from a defensive war, he greeted them and welcomed them and he said to them, now you have come from al-jihad al Small struggle. Now get on with the al-jihad al-akbar. So the companion asked Ya Rasulullah, what is Al-Jihad Al-Akbar? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is said, is fighting your nafs. Taking the control of this powerful internal motivating force. So the main opponent of Sufism or Tazkiyat Al-Nufus is you purify your heart. And you don't have any enmity for anyone. In India, Islam did not come through the, through the sword. It came by those perfumed personalities who came with a message of compassion and love. Who came as awliya Allah, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who did not have any hatred for anyone. Who open-heartedly and with the open arms embraced the rest of the humanity. That was the reason. If anybody says Islam was spread by sword, I want to ask them, 1000 year Muslims ruled India, yet they still continue to be the minority in India. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the time is up, somebody is looking at the watch. I don't want to make that person or anybody else late. So we go to the request of the dua. A dua of rahma wal maghfirah for your Imam, Shaykh Sayyid, his wife, passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place her in the highest rank in Jannatul Firdaus and grant her his maghfirah and forgiveness and to all the sick people grant the speedy recovery and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the hikmah and wisdom to understand the holy Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we supposed to understand in order to take our position to translate those values in our day to day life aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al rahim alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran kama amar. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu. La sharika lahu irghaman liman jahada bihi wa kafar. Wa ashadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sayyidul khalayqi wal bashar. Qala Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin bi adadi man salla wa sa'am. Wa salli ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin bi adadi man qa'ada wa qa'am. Wa salli ala jami'a ala الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة يجمعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وصلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين بدوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء من 
minumul amwal innaka sami'un qaribun mujibud da'wat bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin ibadallah rahimakumullah innallaha ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsani wa yuta'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghy ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun udhkurullaha yadhkurkum wa du'uhu yastajib lakum wa dhikrullahi ta'ala a'la wa awla wa a'az wa ajal wa aham wa atam wa a'zam wa akbar wallahu ya'lam ma tasna'un aqim as-salah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar shadu an la ilaha illa Allah shadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah hayya wa salat hayya ala al-mu'ala qad qamat salat qad qamat salat Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allah 